So now we are ready to tackle a real nonlinear two dimensional example. And the net effect of the nonlinear is that now we can have multiple equilibrium points. Nonlinear means multiple equilibrium points. In a linear system, by contrast, you can only have one equilibrium point, and that is at 0, 0, 0, whatever 0 is in the coordinate system that we're using. But the nonlinear system, of which we've seen a bunch of examples of, can have multiple equilibrium points. That's what we're now going to discuss. So the example I want to develop is a very central example. It plays a big role <laughs> in uh, the sixth edition of Molecular Biology of the Cell by Alberts, where it's used to model a gene repression network. And that's a beautiful example. But the original provenance of that example is in ecology where we are asked to look at a system of two species, deer and moose. And unlike the predator-prey equations, deer and moose do not eat each other, neither eats the other. But what does happen is that they compete with each other for resources like food. So we're going to have a D prime equation and an M prime equation. So D equals the number of deer and M equals the number of moose. And now we have a D prime equation and we ask what makes the number of deer go up what makes the number of deer go down. So the first term in the D prime equation is just the birth rate of deer. And that's going to be a per capita birth rate times the number of deer. And we're just going to assume right here that the birth rate for deer is we're going to represent with the birth, the per capita birth rate of three per year. So, so far the birth rate contributes to the D prime equation. But now we're going to have some negative terms. And the first negative term on the deer population is going to be competition between deer and moose. And how often does a deer meet a moose? How often does a sodium meet a chloride? How often does a shark meet a tuna? It's always the same term. It's a product of the two, d times m. And then we need a coefficient to measure the impact of that competition on the deer. And we're going to choose here the coefficient 1. So that's a 1 in there. Then the other negative term is competition between deer. Intraspecies competition. This is cross-species competition. Now we need an intraspecies competition term. And that's going to be dependent upon how many times a deer meets a deer or, of course, d squared. And we're going to assume that that coefficient is also 1. So we have a simple differential equation here for d. Birth, interspecies competition, intraspecies competition. OK, now we need an m prime equation. And what is going to change the number of moose? Well, again, we're going to have a birth of moose. We're going to assume that the birth rate of the moose is a little less than the birth rate of the deer. 
So m prime here is 2m. And then we need, again, the interspecies competition. And we're going to make the assumption that because moose are bigger than deer, the impact of the interspecies competition, which was one on the deer, is only going to be half that on the moose, 0.5. Similarly, we're going to have a moose-moose competition term, and that's going to be m squared. So, here is the deer-moose model. And now the question is, what is that going to predict? What, are the, what kind of behavior do these differential equations predict? So the first thing we do, as always, is we draw our state space, which I'm going to draw as MD space in the positive quadrant only, because these are animal populations and negative values don't make sense. So we're in the MD positive quadrant. And now we have to find the equilibrium points. And the definition of equilibrium point is d prime equals 0 and m prime equals 0. So we have to solve these two equations simultaneously. So how do we do this? High school was a long time ago for me. Um, how are we going to do this? Well, the first thing we observe, and this is always should be your first try, is what about d equals 0 and m equals 0? Does that make these two terms equal 0? Let's see. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Yes. 0, 0 is an equilibrium point of this system. By the way, don't get the idea that 0, 0 is always an equilibrium point. What if we had a forest surface that was introducing deer into the environment at a rate of 10 per unit time? Then the model would look like this. And d equals 0, m equals 0 is not an equilibrium point of this model. So don't get the idea that 0, 0 is always an equilibrium point of every model, but it is of this one. So there is our first equilibrium point, m equals 0, d equals 0. OK, are there any others? Well, let's try this. Let's try d equals 0 m does not equal 0. So if d equals 0, we're going to be on that line on the y-axis here. And m is not 0. So let's see where that takes us. Well, first of all, if d is 0, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0. So the first term is 0. This is 0. And we get m prime equals 2m minus m squared. But I'm assuming m is not 0, so I can divide by it. And if I can divide by it, I got 0 equals 2 minus m, or m equals 2. Therefore, the point d equals 0, m equals 2, is another equilibrium point. Good. OK, let's flip that now. Let's ask, what about d not equal to 0 and m yes equal to 0? OK, if m is 0, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0, m prime is 0, great. This is 0 because m is 0. 
And now we have 0 equals 3d minus d squared. Therefore, 0 equals 3d minus d squared. d is not 0, so I can divide by it. And I get d equals 3. So d equals 3, m equals 0, is a third equilibrium point of this system. And now let's try the nastiest part of this, which is d not 0 and m not 0. So if d prime is equal to 0 and m prime is equal to 0 and d does not equal 0 and m does not equal to 0, now we can start dividing by things. So this is 0 because we're looking for the equilibrium points. And we assumed d is not 0. So if d is not 0, I can divide by it. And that first expression then gives me 0 equals 3 minus m minus d, which implies m, let's move the m to the other side, m equals minus d plus 3. Second equation, 0 equals 2m minus 0.5dm minus m squared. m is not equal to 0, so I can divide by it. And when I divide by it, I get 0 equals 2 minus 0.5d minus m, which gives me m, moving the m over, is minus 0.5d plus 2. So now setting these two equal, I have minus d plus 3 equals minus 0.5 d plus 2. Let's add d to both sides, that's 0.5 d. Let's subtract 2 from both sides, that's 1. We have 0.5 d equals 1, d equals 2. And then m is equal to minus 2 plus 3, or 1. And there is our final equilibrium point for which neither m is 0 nor d is 0. And it's d equals 2, m equals 1. And that's going to be right here. And so we have 3. 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, and now 1, 2 are the four equilibrium points of this nonlinear Dear Moose model. And now the question is, how do we find whether those are stable or unstable. We could just plot trajectories. We could just use Euler's method, little dt, plot all of the trajectories, see where they go. Nothing wrong with that. But in 2D, there's a very powerful method that is going to enable us to determine the stability of these equilibrium points. And it's called the method of null clines. So here is how the method of null clines works. First of all, let's go back to our calculations in trying to find the equilibrium points. We said, suppose d prime equals 0. Well, then dividing the d prime equation by d, which we can because we're assuming d is not 0, we got 0 equals 3 minus m minus d. So for just a second, I want to forget about the m prime equation. I want to focus only on the d prime equation. And what we just said was that d prime equals 0 implies 
3 minus m minus d equals 0. So in other words, every point md, or rather dm, every point dm for which 3 minus m minus d equals 0 is a point at which d prime equals 0. And the set of all points for which d prime equals 0 is called the d null Klein. The set of all points for which d prime equals 0. In other words, half of the definition of an equilibrium point. Equilibrium point is d prime equals 0 and m prime equals 0. The d null Klein is just the first clause, d prime equals 0. So what does that look like? What do those points look like? Well, there are the all points for which 3 minus m minus d equals 0. We want to try to plot that. And <laughs> the only thing I know how to plot is y equals mx plus b, the kind of the equation for a straight line. So we're in the md plane here. So let's rewrite this as m. Let's just move that m to the other side. m equals minus d plus 3. Do we know how to graph this? Yes, we do. It's in the form y equals mx plus b. And we know that that's a straight line with slope m and y intersect b. So we have to have a y-intercept at 3 here. And now we are going to draw the line of slope minus 1 that goes through 3. And that is going to go like that. Now, the other points for which d prime equals 0 are all of the points for which d equals 0. Remember, we got this by assuming d is not 0 and dividing by it. So if d equals 0, 0, 0, 0, we know d prime equals 0. So any point at which d is 0 is also part of the d null Klein. d equals 0 is this whole axis. So here, this object is the d null Klein. It's the set of all points for which d prime equals 0. OK, let's go to the other. Let's go to m prime. So first of all, we observe that if m is 0, that's 0, that's 0, that's 0. So every point at which m equals 0 is on the m null Klein. m equals 0 is, of course, this whole axis here. So I'm going to color that red. And then suppose m is not 0, then we got this expression, which is 0 equals 2 minus 0.5d minus m. Let's rewrite that, move the m over. Let's rewrite that as m equals minus 0.5d plus 2. And we know how to graph that. That is a line whose inter y-intercept here is 2, and which has a shallower slope of minus 0.5. And it's going across the d-axis when m is 0, minus 0.5d equals 2. So d equals 4. So here, this object now, this and this, that is the m null Klein. And since the green is the d null Klein and the pink is the m null Klein, any place where green meets pink, 
is going to be a point at which d prime equals zero and m prime equals zero, in other words, an equilibrium point. So here is the point at which green meets red. Here is a point at which green meets red. Here is a point at which green meets red. And here is a point at which green meets red. These are the four equilibrium points at the intersections of the null clines. But now we can do a whole lot more. Because now we can work a version of the method of test points that is very, very powerful and very simple. And we're going to call this the method of extreme test points. So what do I mean? The two null clines, and the way they lie, divide state space into four sectors. And let's just call them sector one, sector two, sector three, and sector four. In each of these sectors, the direction, the positivity or negativity of D or M must be consistent in each of those sectors because if it ever changed from negative to positive, it would have to go through zero, and the only places of the zeros are the null clines. So in sector one, all arrows must be going in the same general direction. How do we figure out what direction that is? Well, let's look at sector one. Sector one includes <laughs> the entire territory northeast of the null climbs, out to plus 10,000, plus 10,000. So let's choose a huge value for M and D. And let's ask, what do the arrows look like? Well, you go back to the vector field, to the differential equation, and it leaps right out at you. If D is large and M is large, then the product of D and M is very large, and the pro D squared is very large. So we have a linear term in D and then two huge negative terms. So what is D prime going to be? D prime has to be negative for huge D and M. So here's D, and we know that. That everywhere here, D prime is negative, which means the arrows are going this way. Now I want to be careful, because I took sector one, but the D prime null climb which is this object here. I drew these arrows here, and that says D prime is negative north of here. But north of this null cline also includes sector four. And if I can just erase that four, that means that in sector four, D prime is negative. And then the fact that this is the D prime null cline, D is going to the left and the northwest of it, it also means D must be going to the right, south, I'm sorry, northeast of it. <laughs> it means D prime must be going to the right, must be greater than zero on the other side of that null cline, that is in the southwest region. So in sector three, it's going like this. And in sector two, it's going like that. So that's D. Now let's do M. Again, let's choose large, large. At large, large, we've got a positive term, which is two times large. And then we have, as it were, large squared and large squared, and they're both negative. So the M arrow must be negative for large D and M, and there it is. And since this is the M prime null cline, it's going down everywhere north of the M null cline, 
which includes this sector, which means that, did I say north? I meant south. Everywhere north of here, which means this sector, which is north of the L M null cline, must also be going like that. And conversely, south of this null cline, these arrows must be going up here and here. So, we got it. Now, it's clear that everywhere here, the arrows are going like that. Everywhere in sector two, the arrows are going like that. In this sector here, the arrows are going like this. And in this sector here, the arrows are going like that. Those are the four sectors. And now we can immediately state the stability of the equilibrium points. The equilibrium point here is clearly unstable because arrows are going away from it. The equilibrium point here is unstable because arrows are going away from it. The equilibrium point here is unstable because arrows are going away from it. And the equilibrium point here is stable because all the arrows are going towards it. So we have an unstable, an unstable, an unstable, and a stable. So we have completely figured out the behavior of this two-variable, non-linear, complicated differential equation. We did it with just some simple calculations. And we have established especially that this center point where uh, both deer and moose populations are non-zero is a stable equilibrium point. In other words, to go back to the scientific interpretation, coexistence between deer and moose is possible. It's possible because it will go to that stable equilibrium point at which both the deer and moose populations are non-zero. And if you push it off a little bit, it goes back to the stable equilibrium point. So this is stable coexistence of those two species. That's the scientific take home. But the mathematical take home is we can totally dope out the stability of the equilibrium points using the method of null clines combined with the extreme value test point. And we can unravel everything else from that one extreme value test point. So to practice this method, I want to look at a slightly different deer moose model. This was the original one that we just talked about. And now I want to model the effect of increased competition across species. Maybe resources are getting scarce. Maybe territory is being restricted. And so the competition is going to be a little more severe. And that's going to mean increased coefficients in the cross-species competition term. So instead of one MD here, we're going to have change that coefficient to a 2. And instead of a 0.5 here, we're going to change that coefficient to a 1. In other words, we're going to double the interspecies competition terms. And we want to know what is that going to do. So let's use the method of null clines. First of all, let's assume that this is 0. If this is 0, first of all, d equals 0 absolutely gives us what we need here. And so d equals 0 all along this axis. And that's part of the d null cline. And then if d is not 0, we, have, we can divide by it. And we get 3 
minus 2m minus d equals 0. My, well, let's move the m over. m equals 1 half of minus d plus 3 halves. So we know how to graph that. We go to 1.5 here, or 3 halves. That's the intercept. And now we want a line of slope minus a half that's going to go through that point. And where is that going to be 0? m equals 0 when minus 1 half d equals 3, when 1 half d equals 3 halves. That is to say d equals 3. So here is the m prime, excuse me, the d prime null climb. Now let's do the m prime, the m null climb. So m prime equals 0. You know something? I left out <laughs> the m term there. Sorry. That's a cross-species competition term. So let's go to the m prime equation. The m prime equals 0. Certainly m is 0, m is 0, m is 0 makes m prime 0. Where is m 0? All along this axis. So this is going to be part of the m null cline. And then the other part of the m null cline is going to be when m is not 0. If m is not 0, I can divide by it. So 0 equals 2 minus d minus m. And that gives me m equals minus d plus 2. m equals minus d plus 2 is a line whose intercept is 2 and which has slope minus 1. Notice that's steeper than the slope of minus 1 half. So it looks like that. And of course, in, when m equals 0, d equals 2. And so here are our equilibrium points. Red meets green, red meets green, red meets green, red meets green. What about this point? Notice, by the way, this is on the red null cline, on the m null cline, but it's not on the d null cline. So it is not an equilibrium point. So we have one, two, three, four equilibrium points, just as before, although they are at slightly different values. So here are the equilibrium points. Now let's use the method of extreme values applied to the null cline. Let's choose, again, the point uh, large, large. And let's work out the change vectors. OK, let's first do the d change vectors. OK, when we're at the point large, large, d prime is equal to slightly large minus large squared minus large squared. So that's negative. D prime is negative north of the yellow line. So D prime is negative here, and D prime is negative here, because this, is, this sector here is north of that D prime null cline. So the arrows are going this way. Conversely, south of the null cline, we have this, we have this. So that's beautiful. That's the d prime null cline. Now we do the m prime null cline. At the point large, large, positive, negative, large squared, large squared, it's negative. And it's negative everywhere above the m prime null cline which means it's negative here, it's negative here. This little sector here, that little sliver there, that's also north of the m prime null cline. And so the arrows are going like that. And then conversely, south of the purple m prime null cline, we're going like this and we're going like that. 
So now if we plot the resultant, you see that this is all going like that, that this sector is all going like that, but this sector is going away. And this sector is going away. So the net effect is this direction is coming into that equilibrium point, and this dimension is going out of the equilibrium point. And what is that? That's a saddle point. That equilibrium point has an incoming direction, and it has an outgoing direction. And that is exactly a saddle point in 2D. So the mathematical lesson is, once again, we're able to use null clines and the method of the extreme value to dope out the stability of the equilibrium points in 2D. And we have a stable equilibrium point here, and we have a stable equilibrium point here, and we have an unstable equilibrium point here, and an unstable equilibrium point here. And what that means is that the trajectories are going to go like this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And I'm just going to redraw that, that trajectories go like this, trajectories go like that, and then in between, they go to this equilibrium point or this equilibrium point, depending upon which side of this axis you started on, where you're in your initial condition, you're going to go to this or this. Now, that's the math. What does that, how do we read that? state space diagram. Well, what it's telling us is there are only two stable equilibrium points. This one, which is all D, no M, and this one, which is all M, no D. The old equilibrium point here is still there, but now it's unstable. And because it's unstable, it means the system can't stay there. And the system is going to go to one of the two stable equilibrium points, which is all D no M or all M no D. In other words, the net effect of this increase in the intraspecies competition term is to change the state space diagram dramatically. This little change in interspecies competition means that stable coexistence is no longer possible. And what you will see is that the system will either go to dominance by M or go to dominance by D because those are the only two stable equilibrium points in this system.